Okay, so guys, we've got so many questions in this place, and I believe a lot of questions are still coming in, and we're going to be taking this now. I want to believe um, we have Jens, Fumi, and Dr. Isaac still on the call. Please, it's very important that you stand by because this section is for you. Whew. So, okay, the first question is to Fumi. Fumi, are you here? Please, um, Fumi and um, Dr. Isaac and Jens, please do well to unmute yourselves um, so that you can easily answer the questions as we ask. Thank you very much. Okay, so for me, um, we have just about 15 minutes for this section. So everybody's answer has to be very swift and um, to the point. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so for me, how can HND holders be exposed to scholarship? I think what this person is trying to ask is that how can an HND holder position himself or herself to actually get or assess scholarships? So for me, please, could you quickly answer this question? Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay, um, the person just has to get the relevant working experience, be he okay. community service, or maybe office work, just ensure you get all relevant working experience related to the opportunities you want to apply to. So you need to get the relevant one and also ensure you have something to back up your Don't just wow, try thank you. Do. Have yes. something. Yes. I'm not talking about having experience. So just answer you. Oh, thank you so much for me. So basically to position yourself for scholarship and any other opportunity globally, it is very important that you be you, you have something beyond your educational qualification. Even if you have a BSc or you have a first class, you still need something in addition to show that you're actually passionate about that thing which you are really, really have some relevant work experience, build yourself in the urgent. This question has some kind of NGOs are uh, incorporated by trustees and you can't actually, um, you can't, you can't do any social, you can't do any um, business venture. You can't, you can't generate revenue by yourself. So in such cases, what do you suggest? How does such NGO, uh, what does such NGO have to do, you know, to actually generate income, you know, revenue to run their NGO and their social impact? organization james did you get me uh you were your connection caught at the beginning but i guess the question was just about uh how you can build a model around it like the sustainable financial model yes something like that um but not exactly how, how you can actually um build a sustainable financial model uh, when you can't generate income or revenue yourself as as, as an ngo that is incorporated by trustee and is limited. You know, you can't actually generate income by yourself. I, I guess that was the question. Um, well, what we recommend is trying to build a model around uh, financial um, dependence. So building a strategy that can be relevant for any sort of uh, either um, customers or other businesses as clients. And um, because this thing about just donating is just in decline and it's not going to keep it sustainable. Um, but nowadays you can actually build a lot with the technology that we already have at hand. Um, so it's not like you have to come up with an innovation yourself. Um, but I think um, a part of running an NGO and a startup always means that you have to give in a lot of time uh, and not expect payment for a long time that is just a part of the life when you're a social entrepreneur um i will always of course recommend you using our platform where you can also get support from volunteers who have experience in building financial models and business development and general business strategy thank you so much james thank you so much okay this question is to for me once more um how do you cope or how do you handle rejections and scholarships and different Friend applications, especially when you feel you met the requirements and all of that. How do you cope? How do you handle rejections? How do you bounce back again after you know that oh we did meet most of the criteria? Oh, even if you you don't know if you meet some of the criteria because those people only know it. So when you have gotten a rejection email, just ensure that when next you're applying you will have something you need to add to that new application 
something they will know, oh, this person applied last year and he was able to add something new. So don't just submit the last application you submitted. Make sure you add something new to the new application. Ensure you keep going and don't give up because one success story cancels all rejection. That's all. Um, I was asking all about networking that you have built. How do you keep? Uh, how do you ensure that those networks are sustained over a very long period of time? So that's the question, Dr. Isaac. Hello, Dr. Isaac. Are you here? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. All right. So, so in terms of like networking and how to sustain uh, projects a lot of time. So first, I would really want to say that you have to be building something for you to sustain your network. So you can just really go yes. for a conference and then you're not building anything and then you think it's, it's not easy to sustain network if you're not building so i would just really use the analogy of somebody trying to build a house you know then the person went for a conference on on how to effectively work on a house foundation right and then let us say the person comes back and then the person is not doing anything again so it means that the person will have a need to communicate with the you know person that is maybe supplying the blocks or supplying bees, you know. So that's how it is. So when you're building something, you effectively reach out to them and you keep working on a project. So most of the networks that I've been able to sustain have been people that you know we effectively worked on projects later on and that. But it's understandable you cannot sustain 100% of your con connections because it's not everybody that you have to build something with. So but build something. Wow, thank you so much, um, Dr. Isaac, and that was straight to the point. So it's very important that you're building something to, to sustain your relationship. So, okay, another question we have here. If you are abroad and you have an NGO in Nigeria, how do you manage it and how do you persuade the grants committee that your location as the team heir does not affect your work back in Nigeria? I think um, Dr. Isaac would be in the best position to answer this question. It's not directed, but I feel Dr. Isaac... Um, considering your location and all of that will be in the best position to answer this question. So, Dr. Isaac, can you please take this question? Okay, yes. So, um, so first is, yes, while you are abroad, the grants committee meeting, the committee or something wants to really see what work has your organization been doing, even while you are away. That's one thing I feel that you really want to uh, do. So, so for you to really believe that they will be able to uh, trust that you are able to do something while you know being team lead and while you're with they will really want to see the effects of what your team members who are on the ground are doing while you are away so for instance uh, while i've been in, you know while you are away for instance so just having an active organization i don't think it should be like it should be, there should be any limitation or any limiting factor that would affect winning a grant even if you are away because you don't really care as much as you are really doing something so usually what really happens is that while most NGO impacted that are away from the country like usually activities really die down you know from the organization standpoint of view and then usually winning grants and winning opportunities really comes from oh we have been active in this space and then we want to do more so I really hope that we can so bridging that gap will really help a lot in um ensuring that they trust in you okay thank you so much um dr isaac that was so so profound okay i'm, I'm just going to quickly take the, the following questions and then we'll round up this section because the questions are very important okay so um can you please elaborate more on the indices to measure your expected outcome or company pro progress per project like is there a generic um a model for measuring and evaluating your project and what are those um models or what are those indices can you please quickly give us an insight into that all right so in terms of like measuring your project like i said it depends on what you want to really do so but there are just really general um indices that you really look look at when in terms of like measuring your project so for instance percentage of expected change like i think everybody's oh five students only five students have been enrolled in that school you know so we want to bring in two more students so that's percent percentage of expected change is like 40 percent because two you know two over five the current one and all that so that's like one of the major things so the most important thing is just for you to be able to the person you know that what really wants to have a project should check out I use the word like other projects in that similar field so for instance if it's climate change now you know the indices will be different from what i would use if i'm doing a project for instance let us say it's on nutrition because in nutrition i would want to look at okay what number of students have we been able to feed what percentage you know has improved over the years um 
if it's climate change, I believe that they're going to be looking at um, um, like reduction in waste, you know, and um, you know many other things, you know, as according to their line. So there's always a language for your line, and that's why one thing, like I said, in terms of like personal leadership, is we in social impact is that's building ourselves. So you have to really go and check out the things down your line. What are the monitoring and evaluation indices in this field? You know, if it's education, it's going to be different. You know, students completing schools, for instance, is going to be an indice for education. So it's, it's always line specific, specific. It's not really generic. So apart from maybe very just interesting attributes like percentage change from what has been there before, and that is it. Okay, so so thank you so much, um, Dr. Isaac. So basically, it's very important for you to understand it from the point of value of, I mean, sorry, for the from from the perspective of your your field. So it's not the same across boards. Oh, well, thank you so much. All right, um, the the next question quickly would be for Fumi, and I'm just going to, okay, so Fumi, Fumi asked the question, which is um something I I think I I can just quickly. Sorry, there's a question for Fumi I meant to say, which is something I can quickly um, respond to, or we'll just have Sam respond to that. Okay, the question is, talking about the work experience on some applications, as the speaker had said, updated experiences are the best it to put down on applications. But as an undergraduate without much work history, does activities as an intern serve to represent work experience too? I'm just gonna answer that straight up. Yes, it does. Most scholarship would ask you to put in your experience and it doesn't matter if it's paid or unpaid. In fact, when it's unpaid and when it's voluntary, it shows how passionate and how um, serious you are about that area. So it really does represent and it really does count. Okay, so um, just before you leave, James, Please, could you quickly answer this question? When you're starting a new NGO, how much should you be so streamlined? And as a starter, how much plans and ideas do you need to form before you start anything? Okay, so um, we're just going to merge that with the, the last question I'm going to take. Um, some applications demand for teaching experience, and if that will be attempted, should it be on academic basis or general life teaching experience? And then finally, if you're leading a career in chemistry and you're leading an NGO in um, SDG4, which is not so related, how do you um, how do you remedy for that lack of equilibrium? How do you persuade the grants committee aside collaborating with people with education degree or experience? Is there any other way? Dr. Isaac, can you please answer this question? And I think that's the last question. Uh, okay, just one more and then we're done. Okay, so in terms of like uh, how much it is for, you know, like starting up an organization, I think starting up an organization is basically, like the word free, free of charge. So you just need to really rally up your brothers and your sisters and say, oh yeah, you believe what we want to do is we want to take this dog to mass, you know, and basically, oh, we believe that this dog can go to mass, you know, and that's like, it's as simple as that. Now, what? After doing that, then you need to definitely do things like registration. So now you need money for registration, right? You have already assembled a group of 100 people. If it's 100,000, if you're in Nigeria, then you just need to tell them to pay 1,000 naira each. Like I said, starting up an organization is free. You know, it's the same story almost by every, like not a Dangote foundation or one very big person's foundation and all that. So that's major thing. And then you just really formalize it and, you know, ensure that you work within the ambit of the law so that you can really get big grants and all that. So I hope I've been able to answer that question. So you just really need people to believe yeah, very much. and the idea. So, and in terms of like, okay, somebody really finished from chemistry and is working on education. I mean, it's perfectly fine. I mean, you could finish from even, uh, you could finish from medicine and then you're working on climate change, you know? And what, what, what I'm trying, so what I was trying to say is that you have to really build up the necessary expertise in that area. So you cannot just finish from medicine and say you want to work on climate change or chemistry you want to work on whatever you know even chemistry and education is related without having volunteered for a climate change organization i don't know whether we get the point or having um like worked or volunteered or interned in an educational organization so that's like in terms of work experience volunteer experience internship experience that's one area to look at it the second area to look at it is education so you could have gotten a certificate course you know in climate change and you know maybe um you don't need to have a degree or something like that you know you could have courses on coursera which you can always put in your application that okay these are your relevant experiences and these are your relevant coursework in this area 
you know you could have attended conferences so the you know it's going to also be you can say oh in this conference i attended and all that you could do scientific publication research peer-reviewed and non-peer-reviewed publication in that area of uh, that you really want to go into that makes you an expert that makes you an authority so once i start publishing papers for instance on climate change climate change in africa and many other things like that i can really claim to also be an environmental you know health advocate and many other things so that's like how all these things really go so it goes with the essence of or uh, it goes with uh, you trying to also build your profile up in that area. So you would see quite a number of people that are not in that field, but are really doing relevant things in, in that in another field today. But if you really look at it, they have work experience, they have internship experience. I mean, I'm not, you don't have to have everything, but as many as you have, the better it is in all this area. And then, I mean, you can, you can do anything you set your mind to do. Wow, I love that last statement. You can do anything, just about anything you set your mind to do. That's that's a very, very, very clear example, like Lonzo said. Thank you so much, Dr. Isaac. I think there's just one more question, and then what this hope as I hand over to Samuel? Just before I hand over to Samuel, I'm going to say a few things after the question has been answered so um how do you choose between an academic learning platform and the career training apprenticeship with a fixed funding does anybody understand this question dr isaac do you understand this question um if you do please go ahead and go ahead and answer please okay seems like the person is trying to say that do you what do you pick in terms of like academic learning or you work on a project something like that so i think that um that's one thing um one um the thing i really picked from this uh, question so in terms of like in terms of um academic learning and uh, working on the project so that ma- major thing is one major thing is that you cannot really rise above the level of your competency and that's like really key thing so you see some people you know no matter how great you are i mean as a young person you know you have to really add some competencies so that you can really attain some position so it depends on what area you are on that level so for instance you need experiences and you need competency sometimes even if you can do the job but you don't have that competence then they will not give you that job so for instance um you know because of different policies and different things so for instance they could say oh this thing is not for anybody that does not have a bsc or does not have you know, this this opportunity if you don't have a um something you know a, a if you have not maybe finished anything if you have not done studied anything biological related or something as a coursework you cannot you know you cannot apply for this uh, cancer in you know diversity program you know for africa so those are like ways where are uh, not having the um what i use the word certificates you know really affects your opportunities in applications and all that so while sometimes you may have some funding or you may have some project that you're working on now, you may not always have it if you do not get off-skill or upgrade your competencies. I don't know whether you get it. So you have to now really choose. Is there an academic learning experience that you need now or you do have the work experience? But the truth is also that a work experience may always also beat the academic experience because if by the time they say, oh, you have worked on this grant, this grant, this grant, nobody will even care again about uh, sometimes, you know, about what's... Uh, whether you are, you know, you are really, really relatively qualified. So if you have choose between both, depending on where you are, if you already have a lot of experiences, then you may actually pick the other one. But if you don't really have a lot of experiences, experiences are gold. Now, really say that people should really choose the experiences and really deal with them um, um, uh, effectively. So that's it. Wow, thank you so much, Dr. Isaac. I mean, thank you so much for sticking till this time. Thank you so, so much. You guys, I want you to... <laughs> okay, somebody is asking where, where you can actually search out grants. Okay, um, I know one place. I know um, Fumi Opportunities opportunities World. And there's so many, there's so many. I don't know if Dr. Isaac has any addition, but I know Opportunity Desk. I know opportunities world i know there is um oia opportunities for young africa there's a whole lot of sites out there that puts up a lot of grants a whole lot and um just just a quick information one year one young world summit application is currently going on for different sectors yes. so you can actually plunge into this you know and, and and apply there's the one for um education sector i think the deloitte scholarship there's just a whole lot and it's a it's like a four-day summit in tokyo 
and trust me it's an amazing it's an amazing summit i've read a whole lot and um samuel here is an ambassador so there's a whole lot you can actually learn even dr isaac you're also an ambassador right yes i'm also an ambassador Yes, so there's a whole lot there's a there's a whole lot you can actually apply for on on the internet but i don't know if dr isaac has any other addiction addition yeah, opportunities for africa, we need to run. you know opportunities for africa you can also check you know startup x with um usual google too you can also snowball into relevant um opportunity websites you know such as like one young god one young god has a whole lot of opportunities to share uh we have um, some for instance if you like to work with an agency and know that you have a careers opportunity profile we have several other opportunity platforms that you can always use it, uh, to check for grants and to check for um, awards and uh, many other things you know for your organization and for yourself personally thank you so much dr isaac thank you so so much so you guys have heard this so many opportunity for africa opportunity um desk and so so many so you have to be building something to sustain a network don't forget and it's very important for you to give value to your network and i'd like to say this as i wrap up um inviting someone to take over it is very very important for you to know that we are the only generation so far with all the resources with all that we need to make changes and our actions are actually very valid when we put it the work we would actually see the change that we so desire so i want you to know that as a young person at this time this is just like your best opportunity the fact that you are young and you're actually um a, 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 you're actually given birth to in this in this season in this generation i mean to say you're, you're a member of this generation it's very important for you to know that you can actually make the world a better place in your only two way it doesn't matter if the only thing you're doing is to actually help 10 young persons get quality education in one village in a kitty state it doesn't matter if that's all you're doing you're doing a whole lot. Those 10 persons who get quality education can actually make the world a better place when they go into different spaces. So I want you to know that social impact is very, very key to, to, to sustaining the world, to making the world a better place. I preach SDG and I tell you if there is anything at all you want to do, just make sure it's aligning with the sustainable development goals and boom, you would find yourself seeing scaling height and you know seeing so many opportunities that you can actually put up for and do amazingly well with just make sure you put in the work thank you so much guys for having me i'm so excited to be your host in this wonderful maiden edition of the impact leaders connect i hope we'll do this together